Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. I have got 35 songs that I want to talk about, ranging from trash to standout, which means this is a full dapper week, where we've got a little bit of everything all throughout here. As always, there is a Spotify link down below uh, for any and all tracks that you may want to see from Spotify, and it's easy access there. Uh, also, I'm trying a new shorts thing, so I'm playing the top 10 songs and new shorts that hopefully will be attached to this video in some aspect, or you can go find that yourself. But uh, yeah, if you want to hear a snippet from that. But let's hop into it with the trash category. A reminder that these are just my opinions. Don't take them as gospel truth. Uh, but yeah, just my opinion. We've got David Guetta, Morton, and Prophecy with Kill the Vibe. Uh, this is an incredibly boring future rave track that is both both too boring for a rave and too derivative to be future. Uh, the vocals get annoying real fast and the production is just so dull, especially for three producers being on this one. So. We've got Armin Van Buren and Chef Special with Larger Than Life, a very poor commercial house track that uh, that's meant to be this kind of happy summer anthem style track, but falls on its face hard. The mixing is so flat. I like cannot understate or underestimate like the the literally the worst mixing I think I've heard this year on this track in particular. Um, and the lack of builds doesn't really lend itself well to the track either. So, did not enjoy those. And we're moving into the bad category, songs I thought were uh, just bad. Uh, we've got Dimitri Vegas and Darren Styles with Summer Dream of Love. Uh, hardcore, kind of happy track uh, that is short, kind of annoying, and all around not a super enjoyable listen for me. And I wasn't vibing with that. Then we've got Bose, Tribs, and Smack Free Train, Yeko X Tony with Gasolina. What even in this is this track? Uh, it has no direction, no style, no fun, no change in beat, and it's not even two minutes long. Um, this shouldn't have been released, personally. They got Rez with Edge, the 2024 version. Uh, this song is the exact struggle I've been having with Rez lately. Uh, taking her kind of core sound that she crafted back in 2016, kind of 17 era, and refusing to do anything different with it, really. Uh, the 2024 version feels just more lifeless and draining than the original, and it's practically just the original just sped up. And so, not a huge fan. You got Cheat Codes, Jason Derulo, Delegato, and Galantis with Morning. Uh, this song is not good, but at least it's not terrible. Uh, it's got a basic Latin beat, uh, questionable feature with Jason Derulo there, and um, the song just doesn't really do anything. But hey, I'll take what I can get. Uh, then we got Don Diablo and Felix John with the monster Don Diablo VIP in particular. Uh, this is what I would call a kind of like softcore track. It's got all the production elements to be and like the heavy kicks for like a hardcore song. Um, but it absolutely mutes the actual kick for a very soft, more chilled out sound. Um, and you know, I, I don't really think that's a great sound in particular. Um, this track isn't mixed very well either. And I think that this VIP wasn't really needed. Then we got Ray Volpe with Song Request, uh, a song that is, yes, very much poking fun at everyone that is trying to make song requests at shows and venues and all that kind of stuff with their phones of, play this song, and it's a bit of a gimmick track, not a bit, it is a gimmick track for sure, and considering that the drops feel like a derivative version of his uh, pre previous track, Laser Beam, I just can't really get behind it, it's also just super hard to do gimmick tracks really right and make them sound really fantastic, and um, I, yeah, I just think as a gimmick, it's not great. Speaking of kind of gimmick tracks, we've got Bear Grylls with Fuck This Pit Up. Um, with this title and knowing that it's a tarot track, you sort of know what you're getting yourself into. It's heavy, it's dirty, it's loud, it's in your face, and none of that is overly appealing to me. This one's like kind of like a pseudo gimmick track where it isn't really but is, and it's really only meant to be played for mosh pits, and um, just didn't really enjoy it overall. But we're moving into the meh category, songs I thought were meh. We've got Steve Aoki and Bass Jackers featuring Teddy B with Voices in My Head from the double-sided single that just came out. Um, yeah, Trance was a strange choice for this collaboration, and strangely, it's sort of just fine. Uh, nothing overly impressive or unique about this, and I definitely wouldn't say it's bad. I just think it's meh. Then we got Yatep and Britt Laurie with Whisper. Uh, this is just a really boring progressive house track. Um, nothing really special about it at all, one way or another. It's definitely not bad. It's just boring. Then we got Riot with Pushing On on NCS. Yeah, bass-centric dubstep that's way more about the wubs than anything else, and I didn't really care for it. Uh, this sounds a lot like, actually, like a Subtronics ripoff to me. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know where Riot's style has been going as of late, but um, this just feels like the wrong direction, uh, personally. Then we got Good Boys with Chain Reaction, another Good Boys track that at least sounds like they put a little bit more effort into creating something with some more soul that's also not Slap House, um, but it's, it's baby steps. Uh, the vocals get tiring quickly and overall just kind of a basic house tune. 
Then we've got Machinist and Code Pandorum with Kingdom, an eerie hardcore track with a constantly driving kick that just has this like weight to it, this real weightiness to listening to the track. And it's intense. I think the mixing is great, but this is just one where the style isn't really for me. I one that I would really go back to a whole ton, but I think you might enjoy it more than me. Then we got Slumberjack and Stabs with So Deep from the new Generations EP now from Slumberjack. Uh, this track in particular is kind of a half deep, half bass house track with a crashing massive final build and drop. Um, this EP is a big mix up for Slumberjack in terms of their like not kind of going to that tribal trap sound that they've done so much in the past and keeping it more house centric. And um, I don't think it's that bad, but I do think it's just meh. We got Griffin, Max, and Disco Lines with Magnet. Uh, continuing this new sound from Griffin, this is another Deep House track with the constant bass line that just does not stop. Um, I'm happy that Griffin is changing up his sound, and I think this could be a great new style for him. Uh, but again, I just think it's kind of more on just the meh side. So I'm happy that there's a change up in style, but this one, I just feel like not quite fully there yet. Then we got Bijou and No Thanks with Intoxicated, a clubhouse track that is uh, very much made for that kind of venue. It's repetitive, it's deep, and will bring a ton of energy to the dance floor. Then we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were really good. Uh, we've got A Craze and Bizu with Flavors from the new Flavors EP from A Craze. Uh, a smashing rhythm track with a great, a really great final breakdown. Um, I'm not a huge rhythm enjoyer, and I thought this was a pretty neat track, so... Then we got Drove featuring Lily Alberg with Here By Now, a late night driving progressive house track that has some good vocals from Lily here. Uh, it's clean, it's well put together, it doesn't do a whole ton, but again, I think it's more on the clean and safer side, and I didn't mind that here. Then we got Slow Palace with Play Pretend from the new Gemini LP, the new Gemini album that just dropped from Slow Palace. Uh, yeah, a, a new calming garage track with a constant background sustain that a little, maybe overpowers the mixing a little bit so. It kind of drowns out some of the garage elements here, but I definitely enjoy the calming atmospheric outro more so than anything, I would say. Then we've got Spaghetti with Gameplay, a uh, punchy and screeching dubstep, makes for a very classic Spaghetti sounding track, uh, but one that actually has a little bit more of an Eptic vibe to it. This feels like it could have come off of Eptic's last album, and um, it's a style that I think actually suits Spaghetti quite well, and I'm excited to see if there's going to be more in this uh, different realm. Then we got Tiesto, Headaches, and Bass Layers with Click, Click, Click. Uh, not entirely sure why Tiesto is on this track. It's so counter to his regular sound as Headaches really takes um, most of the reins here with this kind of moody, deep drum and bass production. Um, sounds very much like the track that they had on uh, the Chase and Status album. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know why Tiesto's here, but I think the track is pretty good. So we've got Aphex Twin with Didgeridoo CR7E version. Uh, yeah, some dense uh, acid house from Aphex Twin on this new Didgeridoo Expanded Edition, which is a project from two decades ago, over two decades ago, has been redone on this CR7E version that we don't really know what CR7E means. It's probably this tape recorder type thing. But um, yeah, it's just kind of your standard left field kind of abstract Aphex Twin sound design. And I think it's good, but nothing more than that. Then we got Guy Arthur with Out of the Way, a hard, punchy electro house track that doesn't do a whole ton other than just provide a ton of power and energy, which I very much enjoyed. Then we got Thirst and Euphoria with Meant to Be, more of a driven, straightforward, four on the floor style drift funk track uh, with some hints of trance. Uh, it's funk, so it's short, but it also has a nice flair to it that doesn't make it kind of just another funk track, uh, one that has a little bit more flair to it. And I know a lot of that was brought to by uh, Nefori, so... Uh, we, we're still in good here, but I do want to note that everything up to this point from the rest of the week is stuff that's like really, really good. Like I have to take a serious moment here to say like all these songs in good, there's like, I think 10 more tracks here are like really, really good. Like I really like this stuff. All of these ones now could have been borderline standout for me. Like this is a crazy good week, uh, in my opinion. So, and we've actually got Kygo and Hala without you starting us off here. And, uh, Hala is really bringing out the best in producers right now. Uh, this may be a fairly by the books, progressive house track, but, um, damn, this is just miles better than the last two singles we've got from Kygo. Um, it doesn't sound like your typical like Kygo track does, but hey, this is really, really great. And again, I love Hala's vocals. I think they're fantastic. Um, I, you, you do you do magic, Hala. I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but you make not great producers really, really good sometimes. So. And then we got Salute and Sam Gallatry with Maybe It's You, a third single from Salute's upcoming record. And while Sam has no production credits here, uh, he might as well have one because it sounds exactly like uh, Sam would produce it, honestly. It's a funky, happy French house track that absolutely kicks butt uh, and is so fun to listen to. 
Then we got Odessa Behind the Sun live uh, from the uh, the Last Goodbye Tour live version. And um, yeah, if you haven't, go listen to the hour and a half long live version wherever you stream stuff. It is fantastic. It's great. Um, if you if live stuff isn't your flavor of music to listen to a whole ton. I would encourage you to give this one a try. This is like peak live music in EDM. So uh, it's a, this one track in particular is a pretty faithful live version of the original, and that's quite a good thing. Um, the song was created for a live setting, and with a more kind of prominent horn section in its finale, it just turns it up to another level. So then we got Yo Mas with Space Travel, a very unassuming song at first, as it has this kind of MGNT-esque art pop lead-in, uh, but transforms into this really neat drum and bass cut that just kind of... It just goes hard on the drops. Uh, it's seriously super fun and unique track and one that um, I have not heard anything sound like this in a long time. So really enjoyed this. Then we got Aluna and Paul Wolford with Heat Stroke, uh, a classic Aluna Deep House track here with a funky keyboard chord uh, or a couple of keyboard chords and an electric bass line. Um, and I mean that in both the energetic sense, like it brings a lot of energy, it feels electric, and also the sonic sense. It literally sounds like the bass line is being run through some electrical current, uh, and it is it is uh, like almost jittery and stuttery, and it is, it sounds so good. There's tons of energy that comes out uh, on that uh, bass line. So big fan of that. Then we got Boss Fight with Ballistic, uh, all gas, no breaks here from Boss Fight as he leans into this kind of um, more modern ISOXO slash Knock 2 sound design uh, for this bass house track in particular. Um, yeah, not as grand as some other ba Boss Fight tracks have been in the past, but this one maybe packs the biggest punch that Boss Fight uh, has had on a bass house track up to this point, so... Then we got Death Pact with Fate from the new From Darkness album. Uh, this track is a long, drawn-out, epic dubstep cut with a really intimate sound design and great lead vocals. Um, just a really well-rounded, innovative track. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, just a producer song album where you just go, wow, this is, like, really good. Like, this is, this is the way that sound design should go when it comes to dubstep, personally. So, uh, yeah, a lot more atmospheric than you would get from something like an AU5, but I, I love it just the same, so... Then we got Fred again, Anderson Pack, and Chica with Places to Be. Fred again is again here in tip top form with the production and with a great supporting cast from Anderson Pack and Chica. Um, yeah, it really brings this track to a whole nother level. Those two uh, kind of like not quite features, but they're on the track as well. Um, it's a great summer track with some unrelenting drum kit work. Uh, it's a bit of a genre bender and in the best way. Um, it really just is a straight up vibe. Uh, and this is so good. And speaking of so good, we are moving into the standout category of songs that I thought were a cut above the rest. And we're starting with Disclosure, She's Gone, Dance. Um, Disclosure has begun a new era and sound of theirs, and it's off to a really good start. It's a beautiful melding of their iconic garage house and a new modern funky overtone to the whole thing. Um, it's some of their most bright and happy production to date, and this could be the start of a real Disclosure renaissance. And I'm loving this one. And finally, my number one track of the week, my number one album of the week, is No Mana. I Contain Flashing Images is the name of the album. This track in particular I wanted to highlight is No Mana and Feed Me, featuring Birdie Scott with Hopeless. Um, the, the best sounding collab I think I've ever heard, period, hands down, without a doubt. This sounds so perfectly like a melding between No Mana and uh and and feed me sound design like it is incredible how well the two mesh together and the sounds and sonic elements and everything it's amazing the like boss or <laughs> feeds me um brooding atmosphere and no man is kind of bright charming synths uh it's it feels unmatched it is whew, so good love this track so so good uh, but that's been this week in edm let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below but other than that i'm dakota from Botan media and i'll see you guys in another video